complex. You know, every time I have something powerful to share, you guys know how it is. You know the enemy. Every time I have something good to share with you guys, we always have delays and people are saying, wait, what's going on? I'm here. It's time for Let's Talk in Clex. It's how we end our week here at Remar Review. It's been a long one. If you think about Monday motivation and how we talked about sacrificing and being alone, oh my goodness, this week has been one of those just grinded in weeks. And I, for one, am happy that tomorrow is Saturday. I really am. So you guys know me. If it's your first time joining, welcome. My name is Regina Callion. I am the expert of all things NCLEX here at Remar Review. And my number one goal is to help you pass NCLEX. I do it through a number of ways. Um, I do have amazing NCLEX reviews, but I also like to take advantage of social media and come here so very often. Sometimes I, I don't even know. I think this is like my 200th <laughs> broadcast, but I'd love to share with you guys up to the date information. So we're talking about NCLEX today and I will be presenting some um, information that I have not seen other instructors talk about and I'll just leave it at that. Because you know what, when it comes to testing for NCLEX, the more you know, the more content you know, the absolutely better off you'll be. But um, if you want more formal information about the products, please check out the website where uh, I house all of the wonderful information resources. It's just great. Go to remarreview.com, check it out. You can see the, the products that we have. Also, all of the free resources that we love to give away uh, at Remar Review. Hi, everybody. Our topic for Let's Talk NCLEX, based off of the question and based off some other things, for today is going to be the national guidelines for nursing delegation. And this is a very, very important topic for those of you who are preparing to test because there is so much misinformation about this subject. And actually I'm hearing it, I'm hearing it from um, the study groups, I'm hearing it from the other NCLEX instructors. So I want to clear up the topic and uh, send you guys right to the appropriate resources so that you can accurately prepare for this exam. Now, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. But beforehand, we have, we, we have good stuff. We have good stuff. So you guys know if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, we had a giveaway in NCLEX prep all week, all week. It was simply to enter to enter, enter, all you had to do was take a picture of your Quick Facts book, the beloved Quick Facts book. So I started off the contest. I took a picture with this amazing book and I knew the contest was going to be legit because we were giving away, uh, or we are giving away the NCLEX Online Academy. Like we're giving it away for free. So I knew that a contest was going to be like for real good, but I did not expect for the number of pictures we got for the creativity of you guys out there. You like you like had the office laughing with your your pictures of the quick facts books. So uh, we will be announcing the winner. We will be announcing the winner today as well as a special surprise for everyone. And we'll be doing some good NCLEX information. OK, so um, the pictures came in. I love them, love them, love them. All different type of quick facts are helping people. Like some people had theirs written on. I mean, you guys just look beautiful. And so I have some honorable mentions of pictures that are just like amazing, amazing. And I, I wanted to uh, thank you guys formally for doing them. So the first one is Nurse Michelle. I love this photo because not only does she have the Quick Facts book, but she has something that is probably a hundred times more dear to her, which is a baby. And it, I know as a mother, the complexities of studying with infants and newborns, it is like a task that you can't even explain to someone. It's like trying to drive a car 
and bake a cake at the same time. Like your mind is in two separate locations. You have two things pulling you. So uh, Nurse Michelle, shout out to you for being a mother who is studying even with the quick facts because quick facts loves babies and babies love quick facts. So it's just a perfect match. Uh, the next honorable mention that I have to shout out is Nurse Chris Crystal, who she was like, look, I got to get in this contest. So I'm going to order the book and then I'm going to take a picture of the order to just confirm to everyone that I have the book. It is just not physically in my presence. So uh, I thought that was super creative. And she was like, I have to get in here. I'm so glad that you have the book. I know that you will love it. I know you will love it. Uh, the next honorable mention that we have, like, it was good. Isn't it cool? Like she was like, I got to do this. I, this is my chance to buy the book. Um, so the next, <laughs> the next picture, I, you guys got to see this. So, all right. So Eric is a good friend. And the reason why he is a good friend, because he physically drew a picture. He reproduced illegally the cover of Quick Facts and he tagged his friend to the picture as an encouragement to get the book. So Nurse Taria, if you don't have the book, please take a hint and get the Quick Facts book. Eric, I don't want you producing my material anymore, all right? But I do say shout out for friends who encourage friends to get Quick Facts or to just do what you need to do to get to your goals. Don't you love having friends like that that, um, that just push you to your goals and introduce you to great things like you did it all <laughs> They uh they just they just call you to greatness and having positive people in your corner. Eric, I, I, I have to really applaud you because I think that you went above and beyond um to give your your friend up the push that they needed. Um one of the pictures that we actually created into a post um is is from this very creative young man, um, nurse I tight help me say it. I can't do it. Right. A dunkel, a dunk, a dunkel, very close, close. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, look, he took a picture in his current work gear, in his current work gear, and he is just a complete representation of many of us grinding out here until we get to where we're supposed to be in nursing. And he's like, Yep, I'm on the job. Right now, I have a nine to five, but I know I need to pass NCLEX. And so I am going to do what I need to do. He got the full package. Like, so he already had the full package, but he was just letting you guys know. He was letting you guys know that he is on his grind. Like, don't let the construction hat fool you. I am a nurse. And I love that. So we had uh, so many, I know, <laughs> we had so many uh, amazing entries for this contest people who are trying to get the online academy because literally the online academy is a great resource i like it that it gives you instant access to the lectures um and then also you get those practice questions it's just a solid way for you to study and of course i provide all of the lectures so the the information is just straight to the point and you end up at the end of the program like I got it. Like, yeah, that feels it feels good to study. I've done a whole lot. So the online academy was the special prize that we were giving away. And we have a winner. So I want to let you guys know who that winner is. And then we'll get into our Let's Talk NCLEX. Uh, so the winner is Nurse Katia. Feliciano. And listen, she is our winner. And she actually posted her picture on Instagram. And I loved it so much. We, uh, we picked her. So she will be able to get her online academy. Congratulations to you. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the package. You started with the quick facts. So now you have the full program um, to complete your study. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do our contest. Now, you guys know me and I, I have a problem with just choosing one. I really do. I have a problem with just choosing one. So I actually have another winner uh, for the online academy. I'm giving it to you, nurse. Angela Richardson, thank you so much for, um, you know, I, I really, oh, I'm so happy to be able to give Angela uh, her 
online academy because she has been really super involved with Remar for a while and she's only had quick facts. So now she gets to have the entire program. And I want you to let me know how much you like it. Like you have to come back, Angela, um, and let me know how it was. Let me know how it was. Like yeah, some people knew two people were coming. I had to have two winners. I had to Facebook and Instagram. You guys play such a big part. Like for Instagram, they use the hashtag NCLEX prep and uh, when you go to Instagram now and search for that hashtag, you see quick facts pop up, which is really cool. You get to see all the pictures of people with their quick facts books. So congratulations to you guys both. Um, I hope you enjoy the product. I worked really hard, not only on the quick facts book, but the online academy. So congratulations to both of you guys. But you know what? I, um, I just have to, you know, I just have to really say that whether you whether you won or not, like I have to have another winner, okay? Because the online academy right now, I know people are getting ready to test soon, and the online academy is so so perfect for those of you who just like really need a jump start today. Like or I really really need <laughs> Angela. Thank you so much. Um, congratulations again. Are those of you who really need like a jump, jump start today and you've been looking at the Remar products and you're like, oh, should I get it? And should I not get it? And you're like kind of playing double dutch trying to jump in to your NCLEX. So um, ugh, I'm doing this for you guys. OK, so here it is. Um, my my next winner is going to be, uh, you know, the online academy is normally two ninety nine, which is is a fair price for the material that you get and the questions and the resources and everything. But uh, I'm doing a sale for you guys where I will be giving $100 off of the online academy. Uh, oh, I hope you guys take a time. Oh, uh, please listen. <laughs> if you ever in your life wanted to buy the Remar Review program, this is the time that is for you to do this okay because a hundred dollars off is not a it's not a regular discount you guys all right this is like a special holiday discount extravaganza but i'm doing it today september uh what is september like a random day in september so <laughs> take advantage of it that's the online academy you guys will love it i am sure if you're an international student listen if you're an international student our international packages come with free shipping. So um, you get the online academy and you don't have the, the quick facts book. Like this would be the time uh, that you would get it. So the online academy is not out of stock. All right. The online academy is available for you guys. So consider it. Check it out. Do yourself a favor. $100 off the online academy. I don't know how else I can motivate you all. Okay. Uh, yes, the lectures on the online academy are the same as the DVD package. So you get the same great information on a, a instant access format. Okay. So that is the NCLEX prep giveaway. So in the end, everybody is a winner here at Remar Review. Uh, Thank you so much for taking your time out to participate in that wonderful giveaway. Now, let's do our Let's Talk NCLEX question of the week. It was a good one. It was a good one. Here it is. A new nurse graduate observes three nurses' aides yelling and arguing in the hallway. Which action should the nurse implement first in this situation? So um, a new nurse graduate observes three nurses aides yelling and arguing in the hallway. Which action should the nurse implement first in the situation? So you know what's going on. You see three people arguing in the hallway. Uh, here are our choices. <laughs> Number one, tell the unit manager to check on the nurses aides. Two, advise the aides to stop yelling in the hallway. Three, mediate the situation to diffuse the tension. Four, document the names of each person involved for accurate reporting. Five, ask the nurse's aides 
what the issue is. So if you have people arguing and yelling in the hallway, should you one, go tell the unit manager to check on these nurses' aides. Two, advise the aides to stop yelling in the hallway. Three, mediate the situation. Two, diffuse the tension. Four, document the names of each person involved for accurate reporting. Or five, ask the nurse aides what the issue is. So here on Facebook, when I saw this question posted, almost immediately um, the answers were varied. The answers were uh, all different, all different kinds of rationales. People thought you should do this or that. So it took me down a rabbit hole of studying uh, and preparing for today's lecture. So um, I see the answers coming in two, three, two and three. You guys know you can't do that. You have to commit to one, go with your first mind. That is uh, the best way to do these NCLEX questions. So um, actually the correct answer, let me show you what it is. If you have, if you have your ancillary staff, those under you, yelling, making a disruption in the hallway, the first thing you want to do is advise them to stop yelling in the public place. That is the very first thing that you need to do. And this is very important because sometimes as nurses, um, sometimes as nurses, we have a, a hard time delegating or doing things that may seem confrontational. But to be honest, when you shut down a situation that is unprofessional and that could, um, I, I guess, that could ruin uh, experience or the care of another, of a patient, uh, it's your responsibility, it's your, it's your basic duty as a nurse. So um, the rationale, you got, congratulations to those who got it right, um, but the the yelling and the arguing should be put on pause, should be stopped. And if the nurse decides to mediate or investigate whatever the situation is at that time, it needs to be done in a private place. So at the time people are yelling there in the hallway, that's not the time for you to say, hey, what's wrong? What's going on? Because what's more than likely going to happen is your investigation will escalate the situation, right? Uh, so people will get even more uh, demonstrative and they'll get even louder because now they have an audience and they're trying to prove to you why whatever it is is happening. So the best thing to do when you see a fire is just put it out or right? put it out in the conversation. So this is uh, essentially a spin on a delegation question. And when it comes to delegation, it is very, very tricky to get to um, the correct answer sometimes. And there is a reason for that. And I'm going to talk about it in a second, but I have another consideration for you guys. Okay. I got another consideration for you guys. And Angela, congratulations. You got the question right. And you won the online academy today. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. So here, here's a consideration for you guys. When we're talking about um, delegation, and we're talking about what you can and cannot do, here's this. All right, listen. Can an unlicensed nurse's aide assist a client attempting to self-administer heparin via subcutaneous injection? So let me read it again. Can someone without a license assist a client attempting to give himself an injection via the subcutaneous route, okay? Think about it. We're talking about delegation here. I, I wanna kind of focus on uh, this topic today. One of the benefits of our Let's Talk NCLEX is that I get to come on every week and uh, joggle you guys' minds and allow you to critically think and allow you to um, really really consider uh, weak areas and things that you need to study. So I see everybody saying no. I see everybody saying no in perfect because that is that is kind of what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting you guys to say no, that an unlicensed person cannot 
help a person <laughs> who is attempting to give themselves medications, um, injectables, oral, or whatever. But I know that you guys know that they absolutely can. All right. Unlicensed AIDS, they do it all the time. I, th I think that when I put, when I wrote the question and I, I put in the injections, you guys automatically said no. But look at the question again. Can an unlicensed nurse's aide assist a client? So who's giving the medication? Uh, a client attempting to self-administer heparin via subcutaneous injection. So I want you guys to I want you guys to consider this. Okay, I want you guys to consider this, and it is delegation. When you talk about delegation, when you talk about, uh, when you hear about it, most of the nursing research and delegation is specifically for what type of patients? Like when you think about delegation, um, when you think about delegation and where it is done the most, where, where delegation is done the most, what types of healthcare areas do the most delegations? Is it, um, is it hospitals or is it nursing homes or is it homes? What, what, what would you say? Would you say hospitals or nursing homes do more delegation? This is a good question. This is a good question. And remember everything that I'm coming, uh, I, I, everything that I'm presenting to you guys is researched, okay? It is not just my own opinion. It is actual facts. Where is delegation done more at? In a hospital environment or a nursing home environment? Ooh, this is good. This is good. I see. I'm seeing this. I mean, you guys critically think. Today is good. Today is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you think about or in your minds, when you think about nursing delegation, most, the majority of the research is done for the nursing home environment, okay? It is done where there is more prevalence of uh, nurses' aides doing things, LPNs doing things. Um, this is where the bulk of delegation in a very, um, I don't want to say vague, but very variable circumstance, okay? Very variable circumstances. In hospitals, it tends to be staff at appropriate level, not appropriate, because it's making nursing homes seem like a lesser place, and that's not what I'm trying to do. But the rules for delegation in hospitals tend to be very structured, right? Tend to be very structured. and But with nursing homes, because you have uh, different levels of care, different types of people coming in, uh, there tends to be a need to study, to, um, yeah, to basically study what is exactly going on in nursing homes, okay? So coming from that standpoint, when you think about nursing homes or assisted livings and you think about nurses' aides and what they do, sometimes it's a nurse's aide who is with the client more than a LPN or RN. Would you guys agree with that? Um, that you have nurses aides coming into the nursing home or assisted living and staying with the client all day. So that nurse's aide uh, watches the client give themselves their medication, right? That nurse's aide, um, if a client can't reach a pill or pull a pill out of a medication bottle, that nurse's aide helps that client to do that. And that is something that they are able to do. So I'm presenting this to you guys as, as a question because I know we need to talk about it, right? I know we need to think about what we currently know and we need to discuss more about it because that's what learning is. It's a discussion, it's a discussion. So I'm glad that you guys come, but we're gonna start with this. I'm gonna post to you another question and that will roll into um, our review, our review on national guidelines for delegation okay so here's the question the nursing delegation procedures inside of a hospital are determined by which group 
The nursing delegation procedures that are done inside of a hospital are determined by which group? Number one, physicians. Two, nurses. Three, hospital administrators. Or four, pharmacists. Uh, who determines what nursing? Oh, this is good. Who determines what nursing? What nursing uh, procedures are delegated? Who determines what nursing procedures are delegated? Oh, you guys are fast. Who determines what the nurses can delegate and what the nurses cannot delegate on the unit or at, or outpatient setting, like in any organization, in any organization? So we have the physicians, the nurses, hospital administrators, or pharmacists. This is our review on delegation. This is our review on delegation. All right. So I have I see I see a lot of people saying hospital administrators. I see a lot of people saying it's the nurses. The nurses tell the nurses what they can delegate and what they cannot delegate. Just one person for the physicians. <laughs> Landy says, I'm changing it. I'm changing it to two. I'm changing it <laughs> to nurses. It's good. Okay. So I'm getting the answer to coming in. We're talking about who tells who tells the nurses what they are able to delegate. Whew. Do the doctors tell us that? Should it be the board of nursing? That's a good question. Should it be the board of nursing? Does the board of nursing um, tell tell the hospitals what they can delegate and what they cannot delegate? Good question. Okay. Is it nurses? Do nurses make up what they can delegate and what they cannot delegate in a hospital? Do we all get together and have lunch and say, you know what? I'm going to quit delegating vital signs because nobody is really doing them. Is that what we do? Do doctors get together and say, you know what? The nurses need to quit delegating telephone orders. <laughs> How does it work? How does it work? There's a reason. It's a reason I'm asking this. I'm, I'm, I'm being, all right, I'm not trying to be difficult. Let me give you the answer. Here we go. So the answer is, is actually the hospital administrators who determine what nursing procedures are going to be delegated within their organization. Most of you guys do that, right? The hospital administrators get to determine what the nurses can pass on and what they cannot pass on. Now, I know a lot of you guys pick nurses. I know a lot of you guys pick nurses. No, I didn't mean the board of nursing. I just meant regular nurses in the answer. But um, I know a lot of you guys are like, well, wait a minute. How can hospital? I know you guys are asking, but let me just say this. Okay, so let me read this. The delegation process begins with decisions made by hospital administration. OK, so hospital administrators of the organization make the decision and then it extends down to the staff. So the hospital administrators, the hospital administrators, they make the decision like, OK, nurses can delegate these specific tasks. But then it is the responsibility of the nurse to determine whether the person that they're delegating it to can be responsible for the for the assignment okay so the hospital says you need to delegate these things or you're able to delegate these things and then the nurse says uh i know i can delegate this but i don't want to i want to hold on to it or i want to pass it on all right so that's kind of how that works um but i know somebody is probably um asking this question so i did a let's let's ask remar right now how are the aspects of delegation formulated or determined by hospital administration? Like how do people who are not practicing uh, nursing, how are they able to come up with what I as a nurse can and cannot do? Like, is anybody asking that question? Is anybody saying like, how can hospital administrators, you know, know this? How, how will they know this? And the answer is quite simple. And these are the things that I wanna call your attention to today. Um, the hospital administrators simply use the delegation process in the State Nurse Practice Act, okay? The State Nurse Practice Act. 
And the delegation process, most of you guys are familiar with. I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but the delegation process is simply how do you determine, like, how do you determine if somebody is knowledgeable? Like, okay, so if you have an order to give, you know, IV Dilaudid, how would you determine who could give IV Dilaudid? Like, that's the delegation process. So it depends on the person's education, you know, their experience, their training, et cetera. But also, you have to use the State Nurse Practice Act. Have any of you read the State Nurse Practice Act lately? Has, has any of you ever read your State Nurse Practice Act? Okay, I bet, I bet that's a no, but that's okay because I have read it and I'm prepared to talk to you guys about it today. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because what makes it challenging, what, what makes it really challenging when it comes to delegation is that um, the State Nurse Practice Act, the State Nurse Practice Act is the document that defines what you can do as a nurse. Now, this is very important because there is a State Nurse Practice Act for every state in the United States, okay, in America. So there are literally 50 of these practice acts. And you need to be responsible for knowing what your state has committed to as terms of what you can do. And so this is why this is very important because being a YouTube, being a YouTuber, I, uh, and a Facebooker and an Instagrammer, I tend to, I'm, I'm exposed to other people who do or try to do what I do. So I, I hear people. I hear people giving NCLEX lectures on this topic and the information is, is totally erroneous. So I want to caution you guys, be careful who you're studying with when it comes to NCLEX on certain topics such as delegation, all right? Because the, the delegation procedures of one state can be and will be very different from another state. But I said I was gonna connect you to a resource, so that's what I'm gonna do. Everybody is able to find their Nurse Practice Act. Uh, I, I just went to ncbsn.org and they actually have a link where you can choose your state and you're able to uh, you're able to read your Nurse Practice Act. Okay, and I spent some time doing it today. It's very helpful. So, like, I did Ohio. I did Ohio because that's where I am. I did Florida and California. And when you go, I just printed mine out and I highlighted it. But there's some really very, very integral things in your Nurse Practice Act. So like for Ohio, they give you a list of topics that are in the Nurse Practice Act, like um, standards of practice. So we know when it comes to NCLEX, it is based off of the standards of your nurse practice. And this is challenging because there's literally 50 different nurse practice acts, you know, like every state has their own thing. But within every one, there are basis, they're the basics of nursing that you must do or that you're able to do. Um, and it also, in Ohio's Nurse Practice Act, it tells you what tasks that you're able to delegate. So as I was reading it, I was really happy because um, the the standards of practice for the licensed practical nurse and the registered nurse uh, really follow what I teach in the NCLEX review. Um, one thing that stood out to me is that in the state of Ohio, it is appropriate and it is okay for the LPN to um, do a referral and do a consultation when a patient has a complication that comes up. So I, you know, I'm looking at the language here and it's like, okay, LPNs can do referrals and consultations in Ohio. So this is really interesting for me to know. Um, last week we did an NCLEX question for Let's Talk NCLEX, what to do when a nurse uh, is, is refusing to carry out a doctor's order. So in the Nurse Practice Act here, it gives the steps of what a registered nurse is supposed to do when she does not want to carry out a physician's order. And there are steps that you're supposed to take. 
So um, also here in the Nurse Practice Act, I highlighted a, a whole lot of stuff, but it listed things that you should do before delegating to a practical nurse. So for like, um, so it says, before a registered nurse provides direction or delegates to a licensed practical nurse, the registered nurse should um, assess, assess the activity, assess the education of the licensed practical nurse. Um, another thing that was on here was definitions. So in Ohio, there are positions called medication aides. And literally, these are people who have a license to administer medications you know, in such places as nursing homes or assisted care facilities. So, you know, as a registered nurse, you want to know those things. Um, and then this is where I got the question today for, that I just proposed to you guys. And I found this in a couple of the different uh, nurse practice acts that when a patient is self-administering a medication or treatment, those without a license okay are able to assist them and they are um and they are not doing unlawful acts so it would just be the same as if a family member is assisting a patient trying to do a procedure or whatever okay so that's a very good NCLEX question that you can be presented with and it would it would um test your depths of delegation and what you knew about that topic now, the Ohio Nurse Practice Act that I'm reading here is good for five years. So that's the update on that. There was, I thought there was one more thing from Ohio. Um, oh, yeah, there's one more thing. It, it just also tells um, the how to supervise, how to supervise an un unlicensed person to do a task. So very good uh, for the Ohio Nurse Practice Act and Florida. In Florida, <laughs> I don't know the ones that I looked at for real. Florida was the most general. It was, and when I say general, I mean kind of like vague. It really just talked about like the the nurses' aid training, uh, nurses' applications. So if you go to Florida Board of Nursing, I think you're going to have to get more into the revised codes of your Nurse Practice Act because I really didn't find. Um, that much in terms of nursing delegation assignment detail, okay, for Florida. So if you go to the link that I showed you, you will definitely have to do a more digging than what I was prepared to do essentially for Florida. Um, California, for you guys who are in California, when you read your Nurse Practice Act, I think it's written very beautifully. It is divided very nicely into the different practices of nursing. So um, you said don't give them, I like that. It is divided very differently uh, in terms of healing treatments and midwifery and emergency nursing. And you know, with California, it, you have the vocational nurses. So California does a very good job with their Nurse Practice Acts in explaining what it is that you need to do or you can do in your scope of practice. Uh, so I think that whenever you guys run into a question about delegation uh, in, in terms of what you do know or you don't know, I am happy to be a resource for you guys. And I am saying this to say that everything that you study and everything that's presented to you from anybody who is attempting to educate you about NCLEX needs to come from a point of reference, okay? And not just, well, hospitals do it this way or hospitals do it that way. Because literally, hospital administration whatever they think is going to be best for their hospital and their bottom line, which is, you know, dollar signs at the end of the day. So you guys have to be responsible for knowing what's in your uh, Nurse Practice Act, not only for delegation, but also because as nurses, we are responsible to be mandatory reporters of uh, an organization or a person who is violating the current Nurse Practice Act, okay? So um, I am encouraging you guys to make those necessary steps. I mean, the benefits of reading your Nurse Practice Act, of course, you'll be able to know the current standards of practice 
whether you're an RN or a PN, but you'll also learn the rules for delegating nursing tasks. And this is very important when you are not only studying for NCLEX, but when you're working as a nurse and protection for yourself. Because if you know what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, then that helps to ensure that you don't put your license in jeopardy. And a lot of new nurses do this all the time because they want to be friends with the management. They want, you know, doctors to like them. So they do things that are out of their scope of practice. They do things that are not in their Nurse Practice Act, like obtaining informed consents and such and such, uh, because they really just don't know. And I read my review, I want you guys to be well informed and able to speak intelligently when you say you are not going to do something. I want you to have backup for that. So these are benefits for you guys uh, to take some time to study. Now, I am going to get off my hobby horse of the Nurse Practice Act and off my hobby horse of telling you guys to look things up. You know that's one of my favorite things to say to you guys when you're studying for NCLEX. Look it up, look it up, look it up because you will remember it longer, okay? And it will stay with you. But this is one of those things that I really would like you to look it up, okay? I really would like you to look it up. Before we go, I, am, I see your questions about the online academy, the sale, and all those things. I want to um, ask you guys, are you ready for another question? This is still Let's Talk NCLEX. This is still Let's Talk NCLEX. So uh, let, us, let us look at the NCLEX question that I posted on Instagram this week. And, you know, Instagram is pictures, so I got to show you a picture. All right, so um, it says an eight-year-old presents to the ICU with acute blistering of the skin and mucous membranes. The mother states the child took a new medication called carb carb carb. Why can't I say it? Because I'm trying to read it. Carb carbenzapine. Here we go. Which is the most likely diagnosis? One, chicken pox. Two, internal second degree skin burn. Three, external first degree skin burn. Four, Steven Johnson syndrome. Five, chemical dermatitis. Or six, reticulated skin lesions. Have you ever seen this condition before? Let the answers roll in. What is going on with this child? What is going on with this child? You guys always do so much better than Instagram. I see the answers coming in. Are you guys just copying off each other? Not a single, not a single different answer. Everybody is for everybody. Everybody. All right. You guys, you guys got it. You guys got it. <laughs> Red. I like. That. Okay. So, yes, you guys got this one. This was easy. Too easy for Facebook. I'll remember that next time. Steven Johnson syndrome. This is an allergic response um, initiated by the immune system to a medication. It is tough. Yes, it is tough. It's, it's not seen that much in children, more so in adults, but there are certain medications uh, that can trigger this response. And essentially, uh, the skin, it starts like... Uh, flu-like symptoms. We have red man syndrome, Steven Johnson syndrome. Uh, so you feel like you have the flu a little bit. Um, and then initially the skin begins to blister and peel off. Very, very painful. Uh, the, the patient has to be treated um, mo more than likely in the ICU or uh, specifically in a burn unit for the the necrosis of the skin that happens. Uh, also flushing, flushing or stopping the medication, a lot of analgesics for the pain to help this patient recuperate. So um, 
the treatment can be complex because you have to understand that when the skin, when the skin is peeling and being removed in such a fashion, one of the biggest jobs of the skin, it, it helps to it helps the body to retain moisture, right? So the body is literally drying out because the skin is so exposed. So you have to hydrate this patient very, very well. So remember to study Steven Johnson syndrome if you are uh, preparing to take your board soon. I know a lot of you guys are. So, okay. Uh, I know, I know. This is a good study. This is a good studying time. We, we are, we're more relaxed. We're in a fun environment. We're laughing. We're joking. And because we're so relaxed, we're getting the answers right, right? We're getting the answers right. And that's what I want to do. We, we have a community here where we're able to discuss and demonstrate what we know for NCLEX. And it just makes the studying process a lot funner, right? Because you're not doing it when you're not doing it by yourself. So um, phone number, some people ask, some people want to chat. Uh, 855 NCLEX now for your recommendations, your ordering help, whatever questions that you have. Support at remarreview.com for the you guys who have the package, who have your NCLEX questions, concern. We also take prayer requests at this location. Support at remarreview.com. Um, questions that I got about the online academy. Yes, we are doing the $100 off sale. Uh, for the online academy, some of you guys say, hey, Regina, I have the DVD package. Shall I also buy the online academy? And what I want to say is that's totally up to you. The lectures in the online academy and the DVD package are the same. So the lectures in the workbook are going to be the same. Now, the difference will be in the questions because with the online academy, you have uh, you have homework questions and you have your uh, practice exam questions for every module. Now, these questions are totally different from the ones that you experienced in the DVD package. So they also will call for you to de demonstrate that you know the information. And with the online academy, you have the mandatory 80% passing rate before it lets you move on. So don't think that just because you have the DVD package, you would you would enter into the online academy and be able to like click, click through everything. It's not going to work like that. You'll literally have to think about the questions and answer them. Uh, now, if you don't get an 80 percent on the first try, you can take the test again. Um, my goal is for you to pass it the second time around. OK, that's my goal for you guys. I don't mind you. Um, having to take an exam two times in the online academy, but the reality is, is after you fail an exam or quiz one time, you need to stop, you need to stop, look at the questions that you missed, and then study those questions. So when you come back and take the exam again, you pass it. Some people just like to take exams, take exams right after each other until they pass it. And then they feel good about passing, but that is not the way that you study questions, okay, um, for NCLEX. Yeah, the winners have been announced. So you have to go back to get the winners. So right now we're talking about the sale on the online academy. So in considering if you want to get the online academy after you purchase the DVDs, think about do I need more practice questions for the information that I studied? Because also with the online academy, not only do you get a whole slew of questions, but also at the end, you get the two NCLEX ready exams where those are exams you have to get a 90 percent in order to um, pass the exam. Now, another thing with online academy is the online academy is money back guaranteed. OK, the online academy is money back guaranteed. So. If you invest into the online academy and you don't pass, you get that money back. All right. Now, so that is for those who do the online academy. And then you have to test within a certain period of time. All right. So you have to be close to testing. You have to have the desire to study and then test. This is not the program where you buy the online academy and then you don't test until April of 2019. 
No, this is for you guys who are wanting to get started. You get a printed, you print out your workbook, you get started right away, and you go through all of those. Um, you go through all of those questions. Um, I have Quickback's book. I'm due to take NCLEX in two weeks. Should I read the whole book? <sighs> if I bought, if I bought a book for NCLEX, I would want to read it. I would want to read all of it. Um, especially like a book like Quick Facts, where you're getting a lot of the core content. Remember, when it comes to test date, you can always reschedule your test date. You can always give yourself more time to study. It's so much better to be in front of that exam and saying, I'm so glad I read all of Quick Facts than saying, I wish I would have got past page 10, you know? So do yourself a favor. If you're, I'm not done with the DVDs, should I sign up for the online academy? Um, I would if you're considering buying it because the, the the sale is only until, what, Friday, right? Until Friday. So your DVDs, you have them. They're not going anywhere. This is the best time to get this program, okay? Yep. Did somebody else pass? Congratulations, Natalie. Did I miss something? Uh, I'm not ready to take the exam yet. Will I still get the discount next month? Now, this is a flash sale, essentially, because we did the contest. So next month in October, this will definitely uh, not be $100 off, okay? Um, I passed my NCLEX. I'm super excited. Natalie, congratulations for passing your NCLEX. Please tell me more. Are you RN? Are you a PN? Uh, what, what's going on? Is the Online Academy a time program? That's a very good question. You guys are asking good questions here. Um, the Online Academy, you do get 60 days access. So yes, it is a time program. When you purchase the program, you get started. You get started right away. You don't need to wait because you have 60 days in that program. And I found that 60 days is an adequate time for those because the Online Academy has a study calendar as well. So it has its own calendar where you study the information um, in terms of a set schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here we go. How much is the Online Academy with the $100 off? The price comes from $299. Subtract $100 from that, and that brings it to $199. So... Yeah, and if you oh, and if you already have the Quickbacks book, it's it's lower than that. What is it? One seventy one seventy nine. So if you already have the Quickbacks book, it drops it down to one seventy nine. No code needed. Just go to the website remarreview.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. After the online academy, um, after if you when you complete the online academy, you should be ideally testing within three weeks. So um, I know some people like to do the DVD program twice, uh, make sure they have it. When you're going through the online academy, you'll be able to identify your weak areas as well. So in those three weeks, you go back, look at your weak areas. You also do questions um, during that time. But I'm, I'm telling you guys, I, the online academy, you'll really like it. This is a great price. Um, there is no discount for the DVD program right now. The Online Academy is where it's at if you're looking to buy Remar Review at a great price. Because, again, this is considered a comprehensive system. It is the same as the DVD package in terms of the lecture. So in the Online Academy, I'm able to go over prioritization and delegation. And also um, the questions that are there, the homework is graded automatically. So you know right away if you passed or if you failed that quiz that you need to go back and study that information. And I, some people tell me that the Online Academy is a little bit more challenging than the DVD program. Um, and I don't know if it's just the questions that are in there because they're different or they're written different. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I think it would be a little bit more challenging. There's a lot of select all that apply questions in the, in the Online Academy and I think that's intimidating to students just overall. So because there's a lot of select all the apply questions, the online academy seems harder. So <laughs> um, the online academy, yeah, we have one for RN, we have one for PN as well. Um, the PN online academy is challenging. 
I can say that. I can the I can say that. Um, I do think that it is more challenging than the DVD program. So you let me know. You let me know if you like it. Um, let me know if you, if you like it as much. The self study package is what's the what's the normal price of it? The self study. Yeah. Yeah. Two eighty nine. It's two eighty nine. I have to be sure, but there's a code. But if they use a code, Remar Nurse, you get a dash or discount for the um, for the self study package, so you can get a ten percent discount on that. Okay. So um, I have quick facts and DVDs. I still need the online academy. Also, I'm an international nurse, Katie. I think that if you um, if you have the DVDs and the quick facts, only get the online academy. For you, only get the online academy if you see yourself testing. I don't know your timeline for testing, but if you're testing like really soon and you feel like you want to just make sure that that you know the information in the DVD package, try the online academy for the questions to see if you can clear all those questions that are there. Okay. All right. I have. Okay. So this price for the online academy is the greatest that you will see okay uh the greatest that you will see for sure this year all right so it's september i don't think i will be doing another hundred dollar off sale on the online academy like this year at all so if you were thinking about purchasing it this is absolutely the time to do it if you really like quick facts Get the rest of the products because quick facts was always made to go in conjunction with the lectures so quick facts is a great book it's straight to the point but there is no lecture information in there you know um so it, it is totally totally uh a complimentary product a complimentary product i really think you'll like the lecture you guys um and, and you're asking me if you have the quick if you have the question bank uh, if you have the question bank, can you check the PN Online Academy? Uh, Bia says it's out of stock. Okay. Yes, there's still lectures with online. Um, I have the DVD and Quick Facts, but have not tried Online Academy. Do I need it? I'm testing next month. Lane, um, it depends on how you feel. Uh, if you want to, if you feel them, like really confident, because I don't. What I don't want to do is make you guys feel like, um, oh, what you have or what you're doing is not enough. But you, you can determine how you feel do you have the capacity to study more sometimes when people get finished with the dvd program they're like my brain is about to explode like i can't hold any more information so how do you feel are you up for studying another program are you up for doing more questions these are things that you have to ask yourself lane you know in your studying process you have a whole nother month so what are you going to do for that month you know i don't i definitely don't want you to ice yourself out you know, during that month time, if you don't have things to do. Okay. All right. No, Maxine, you weren't one of the winners today, but we are doing a hundred dollars off for the online Academy for everyone. So in that sense, you are a winner. All right. Perfect. So Mark, let me know everything is in stock and ready to go. Um, this is your opportunity for an amazing, amazing discount on that online academy. It doesn't happen all the time. I like the online academy because it's quick and ready to go. Quick and ready to go uh, for you guys that like to be on the computer. If you like um, studying and you print out the workbook, you print out um, in there, I also have some information I think I do. There's there actually are some topics in the DV in the online that are not in the DVD just because of the format. So I go over um, some more respiratory things like um, tracheostomy care, things like that. So consider it, consider it, consider it for you guys that are studying. I want to thank you guys once again. Let me do our class motto because um, I know. Our class model is not $100 off. <laughs> um, I, I know these are words of affirmation. And, you know, you guys inspired me to create a vision board not too long ago. And looking at the vision board really helps me to stay motivated and focused. Maybe I'll share it for Motivation on Monday uh, with you guys. But um, here it is. We can, we will, we must 
pass NCLEX. We can, we will, and we must pass NCLEX. So that is our goal today. And that is our goal tomorrow. Um, and I hope that I can be a part of your wonderful journey that we're on. Uh, we're, we, we come live on here. Everybody at Read My Review works so hard to provide you guys with the best information to help you pass your exam. So, um, you know, we just extend, we extend uh, ourselves to you guys. Please contact us if you have any questions or concerns about anything. Um, let us help you on your journey to passing NCLEX. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Take advantage of that sale. Uh, we can, we will, we must pass NCLEX. See you guys later. Bye.